is zoomophone. So it's actually quite interesting in that lesson. So we'll talk about words that you will write differently, but then phonetically you will pronounce them the same way. And of course, they will have different meanings. Okay, so let's start now. And the first one is un air. Okay, we'll make this little link between the two un air. Okay, and here you've got the translation in English. And then you've got une air. Okay, so you can see that you write it differently, but then clearly phonetically it's the same une air. And this is the translation in English. Une amende. Une amende. And that's what it means. And then une amende. So here you can see that the only difference is here you've got E and here you've got A. Okay. So amende, amende. And the meaning is fine. We're talking he here about the nice little gift you will get if you break the law. Une amende. Une encre. Une encre. And then feminine as well. Une encre. Okay, so you can see here that the only difference is A here and then E here. Okay, so une Encre and une encre, it's the same. Un bar. Un bar. And then une bar. Okay, so you can hear that it's exactly the same way to that you pronounce, but then you've got R, R, and then E. Okay, une bar. Okay, so in that case, it's this adjective, bon, and the meaning is good in English, okay, bon, all right, and here we've got substantive, un bon, un bon, un bou, remember, final T not pronounced, un bou, une Boo. Okay, so here the only difference between the two is here you get T at the end and here you get E at the end. Une boue. Un but. Un but. Une but. Une but. Un cent. Okay, remember this G here doesn't exist, so un cent. And then here we've got this cent. Quite useful because it means without, cent. And we've got a third one, cent, written like that, and it's hundred. Okay, so un cent, cent, cent. Un champ. Un champ. Un champ. Un champ. So here it's quite tricky because uh, if you look carefully, well, of course you pronounce them the same way because that's the, the, the topic of this video, but then uh, masculine in, in both cases. So, un champ, un champ. Un col. Un col. Une col. Une col. The lysomophone, because actually I was thinking about doing four videos uh, concerning this topic. So remember, when we're talking about lysomophone, we're talking about all these words that we have in French that you will write differently, but then pronounce the same way. And of course, the meanings. Uh, will be different. So that's the reason why it's quite important to take a few minutes to try to see them and try to avoid uh, any mistakes. Okay? All right, so we'll start now. And the first one is un conte. Un conte. And here you will have 
the translation. Un conte, so exactly the same pronunciation, but then of course the meaning is different. Un conte. Un coup. And then un coup. All right, so you can see that you get this final P here, but then you don't pronounce it. And last, un coup. Okay, remember, accent circonflex, you don't pronounce it. Final T, same thing, you don't pronounce it. Okay, so un coup, un coup, and then un coup, the same pronunciation. Une cour. And then we get the adjective cour. And after that, un cour. And then, un cour. All right, so you can see that here you get the feminine, une cour. Then you get the adjective cour, un cour, un cour. Un cuir. And the verb, cuir. Okay, so, un cuir, and then, cuir. Une date. Une date. So it's quite interesting because in English uh, it's written the same way. Okay, so in that case we're talking about the fruit. So une date. Okay, and here une date. So 31 janvier, for instance. Une date. Okay. Une eau. And then the adjective eau. Okay, une eau, eau, une faim, and then une faim. Okay, so phonetically the same. Un fil, une file. Okay, so don't try to, uh, well, don't mix it with uh, une fille, okay, because you get the double L, but in that case you get only one, so une file, okay, un fil, une file. Les. Un lait. Okay, so the only difference is final thing here, they you don't pronounce it, they you don't pronounce it, so phonetically you only have this LE. Une mère. Une mère. Un mère. Alright, so mère, mère, mère. Right, in both cases. Here you've got the feminine form and then here it's masculine. Of course it could be feminine as well because uh, mayor can be ladies as well. Les homophones, so remember, we write them differently, we pronounce them the same way and they have different meanings. Okay, so that's the thing. Um, it is the third video, so the next one will be the last one covering this topic. Okay, so let's start now. Un maître, and so you will have the translation here. Un maître, and then un maître as well. Okay, so un maître and un maître, same pronunciation. Un moi, and then moi, me. Okay, so un moi and moi. Un mur. And the adjective, mur. Okay, so un mur and mur. Un nez. Nez. Okay, so un nez and nez. Un nom. Non. 
un nom Non. Un pain Un pain. Right. Un pain. Un pain. Un père. Une paire. Père. Ok, so in that case, we're talking about the numbers. All right, so père. So here, un père, une paire. Père. Une pâte. Une pâte. Ok. Une pâte. Une pâte. Une pomme. Une pomme. Ok. So you can see that. I pronounce them a little bit, uh, well, a little bit different, differently. But then uh, we'll be careful that in many, many cases people will pronounce them the same way, okay? Because in that case, normally it should be a bit lower, pom, and then here more open, so pom, okay? Une pause. Une pause. Okay, so une pause. Une pause. Les homophones, so it's the fourth video covering this topic. Uh, remember, les homophones, we're talking about words that uh, are pronounced the same way but written differently, and of course the meaning is different. Okay, so we'll see 10 of them uh, in this video. So let's start with the first one. Une peau. And here you have the meaning in English. Une peau. Un pot. Ok, so, une peau, un pot. Un point. Un point. Alright, so you can see that here. The only difference is the final letter, ok, but then they are pronounced the same way and both of them are masculine. Un point, un point. Un port. Un port. Okay, exactly the same thing here. Only the last letter is different. You don't pronounce it, and then both of them are masculine. Un port. Un prêt. Prêt. Okay, so it's quite interesting here. So you get un prêt written like that. So in that case, it's a substantive, so word, noun, and that's the meaning. Then you get prêt like that, so final s, but then of course you don't pronounce it. And here, prêt, so the adjective. Okay. Une roue. Roue. Alright, so, une roue, and then, roue. Salle. Une salle. Okay, so even if you get the double L here, it will be still the same pronunciation as this one. So, salle, une salle. So in that case, it's here, it's an adjective. Un seau. Un seau. Ok, so, un seau, and then the same way, un seau. Sur. Sur. Ok, even if you get this accent circonflex, you don't pronounce it, so you get the same pronunciation Sur and sur. Une tente. Une tente. 
Okay, so it's exactly the same pronunciation, even if you get a here, here, and e here. Okay, and both of them are feminine. Une tante. Un toit. Toi. Okay, so in that case, we're talking about moi, toi, lui, elle. So we saw that a long time ago. Okay, and then both of them are pronounced like toi. Un toi, toi. Un toit, toit. 